Thank you, James. Welcome, everybody. We're going to continue with our breathing practice. Uh, I wanted to talk about another uh, posture point. We talked a little bit about opening the qua, opening the midriff, lifting the head, sinking the chest, opening the armpits, basically creating space inside the body. One of the things a lot of times people are sitting, their legs are just hanging out. We can do something very simple with the legs. There's different ways to approach this. But if you have this qua area opening and you have your legs, if I just put them out in front of me, right, without doing a lot, I can just let my head, legs kind of get heavy and drop towards the floor, but I can also have the sense of as that qua is opening and lifting, also taking the legs. Got stuck on the floorboard, but extending them away from the body, and not just the knees, but this area in the hips where the legs come into the torso, and the knees, and the feet, which if I could have my hands and legs move together, they can both draw out of my body. So you want to have a sense of your legs drawing out of your body a little bit. Of course, they're not moving, but if you put them flat, then as they draw out of the body, they'll kind of push against the floor. And that pushing against the floor, right, if you do it stronger than we're going to be doing it, but if I push against the floor, if I do it a lot, I'm going to end up pushing, and that's going to make me stand up or it's going to push my chair backwards. But if you just do it a little bit, you have that sense of opening through the legs, extending the legs, extending the arms out a little bit. Right. Not too much where you're causing tension inside the body, but enough so you have a sense of that they're opening. And then also, if you just try that with the legs, you should find that you have a sense of that causing something to go up the body. Right. You push the feet down, it causes a rising. And you let the head lift, right? The very top of the head, this byway point wants to go up. Right? Ideally, if you take this point of byway, right, if your chin's stuck in, out, tuck your chin, the byway is going up, but it's not just going up, your legs are going out, your midriff, your quad are rising and that's causing your byway point, the top of your head, also to rise a little bit. And if you can, you want to have a sense of that spot on the top of the head lands and goes till you have a sense of it's right on top of the perineum on the bottom. Right, the perineum, that place between uh, your anus and genitals, so that you end up having basically a straight line through the body with this not forward or to the side, but trying to have it land and feel that it's right over that point in the perineum. Right. Open the legs. And not that they're pushing and holding on, but you open them a little bit and then let go, but there's still that space. There's still that space in the quad that's lifting up your lower back. There's still that space in the midriff. As those openings are happening and those legs are opening, you're going to try to, as best you can, feel that lift going up the front of the spine. So the front of the spine gets lifted all the way up. And everything else in the body hangs off. The arms are just at the side. The armpit closes. But if you open them up, the armpits, then you can let go, have that opening. That opening goes to the top of the head, also out through the arms. And see if you can't get that lifting of the legs to go all the way up the front of the spine, all the way till you have a sense that that byway point is raising up. Right? You can generally have a sense of your head sitting on top of your your torso sitting on top of your hips, but then particularly getting that point, right? Not just by moving it back and forwards, but through that lifting to get
get a sense that it lands right directly on top of your perineum. And then relax. Relax everything in the body. And when you were, we're going to get back to the breathing in a minute, but any time you're breathing, right, and you find you're just practicing sitting and breathing for a while, if you find over time, because gravity is pulling you down, you start to collapse in the midriff, or you start to collapse in that area in the quad, right, where your neck collapses, or any combination of any of them collapsing. Open your legs, open your arms, open your body, and get that space again in your body. And uh, we'll get back to that in a minute, but you're, you're going to, that'll keep you from closing down where your body gets, wants to fall asleep, to being open and energy is freely, freely flowing. And then you're going to check also later on as you open to make sure to check your breathing and see, notice how that affects your breathing. Right. So let's go back to the starting with the diaphragm and the belly. And for the next few minutes, let's just breathe in the belly and get that going. Make sure all the parts, the top of the belly, the middle, the bottom, and also that area of your diaphragm is activated. As you're breathing, right, I should mention also just uh, the arms. They can be on the knees, they can be on the, on the resting on the legs, but they can also be crossed in front of you. But if they're crossed in front of you, they still have that sense of opening. And if your hands are palm facing palm, still opening the armpits, getting that little bit of extension out through the arms. So breathe in the belly. Notice what's stuck and release it, and try to get all the parts of that front of the belly moving. And just like every part of the body that you're breathing into, that it may take time when you start breathing, when you start thinking about and practicing this way, maybe some parts of your belly are moving and some parts aren't, right? And maybe you can get them moving a little bit, but over time and over practice, over weeks, months, right, everything starts to get fuller. I should also mention, right, we're looking for a natural breath. I've talked quite about that, using force and then letting go, letting your breath just become natural. But the natural state of the body is for there to be more movement in the organs and for the breath to naturally move them. But if you go back and look at a baby, or if you look at animals, right, if you look at animals when they sleep and watch their body, right, they're not just <sighs> breathing up in the chest, their bellies move. And if you put your hands on their body, you can feel that breath going everywhere in their body. Right. That's an, a natural way that the body massages itself from the inside. So it may seem when you're starting out contrived, oh, what is this way of breathing that I'm not used to, but really you're looking for what is natural to your body, reawakening what's natural. So breathe in the belly, and then the sides of the body. You can put your hands there if you want to check, right? However you hold your hands, the edge of the palm, the palm flat, whatever's comfortable for you. Relax your shoulders, and again, make sure your head's lifted.
Try to get an evenness on both sides of the body. And if you're pushing, then do a little bit less. Let the breath come into that area by relaxing it. By relaxing it and putting your awareness there. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Hopefully the more body parts you start adding, the softer you make your breath the more you start to have that sense of filling everything naturally, the length of your breath will start to extend a little bit. And the other really big thing to get your breath to slow down, fill up, and extend a little bit is softening, relaxing everything in the body. Relaxing your nervous system, relaxing your intent, relaxing your mind. And then feel your lower back. You can use the back of your hands, your palms, or if you have your back pressing against a chair or the floor, to try to get that breath to start to move into the lower back. There may not much be much movement at first, but first start to feel that part of your body. Let the movement of your breath start to naturally move into that area. Start to let that area fill up and move. Once your awareness gets into there and you can feel it happening, you may not need to put the hands there anymore. Finding that area is tight, not moving very well. Maybe adjust your posture. Find the place where your weight is on your sit bones. 
open up the legs a little bit. And as you do each posture point, try to keep that lower back relaxed. If you open up the legs and the lower back gets very tight, then do less. Go back. Find a way to open up the claw, lift and open up that area. Open the legs a little bit, lift the midriff a little bit. Try to do that in a way that's keeping your lower back soft and letting the, that allows the breath to move more easily into that area. Notice if you're lifting the chest. If you lift the chest up too much, you'll feel that the lower back starts to get tight. You'll probably feel that. And then if you let the chest fall down in the belly, you're making sure it's not crushing your diaphragm. There's still movement in your diaphragm and your belly, but the chest you're letting go. So it's not holding on or lifting. Keep breathing, having that lower back move, creating a smooth, even rhythm. If you get that smooth, even rhythm to to happen, that will help to start to soften, to release your nervous system to get your mind to go more calm and relaxed. And when your nervous system starts to release, when your mind starts to go calm and relaxed, then your breathing gets a little bit better. So both of these things reinforce themselves. And you get a cycle through your breath of your your breath getting better, your body getting more relaxed, your breath getting a little bit better, that causing your mind to get a little more relaxed, that causing your breath to get a little bit better. And notice there's one side of your back filling more than the other. Try to get even it out. If there's any place that's stuck in the, in the back there, in the lower back, that's tight and stuck, use the breath starting to move into that area to cause whatever is tight to start to let go. And whatever is tight starts to let go, it will join into that motion that you're creating. And from your lower back, start to let that breath, that movement, start to move up your back into the middle back.
and then the upper back. So when you're doing the back, you want to keep your sternum down so that the sternum is relaxed and dropped. It's not depressed where, again, it's pressing on your diaphragm, but it's not pushing forward as you breathe. Round the upper back. Round the upper back so there's space there. Let the front of the body hollow and round towards the front. Make sure you have these liftings in the body as you're doing that rounding. As you're breathing in through the nose, the air, the air is coming in and it's filling the lungs, right? The lungs are like a bag and they fill up with air as you breathe in. And as that air fills up the lungs, you let that tissue move backwards. Now the upper back is one area that is really helpful to work with a partner. If you're at home, if you're here, and you're having trouble with the back over the over your practice, you know, get someone to put their hands on your upper back f- from time to time, so you can feel something happening. That really helps kickstart, get the movement, get the breathing more easily. All right, let's take a break for a second, relax. And notice every time you're taking a break, you breathe for a while, then when you stop, just stay present in your body. You want to start to notice what effects the breath has just on the general tenor of your nervous system. nervous system, your mind, and try to use the breath and notice what it's doing to you. Okay. So again, I'm going to need someone from the audience, doesn't matter who, anybody. But We'll get to you in a second. But the the next part that we're going to talk about a little bit is this area. We've done the the sides of the body here, but then there's this area in the sides of your ribs. And you're going to want to have a sense of your breath, not just moving backwards, but filling sidewards as well. Now, the ribs are here so that there's not going to be 
a huge amount of motion this way, right? But if someone puts their hands there, then you're going to feel that area filling. And as it fills, the sternum's going to stay down, but the ribs have the ability to move, right? They're not moving a lot. They're not moving a lot. It's not like your arms where they're going to come out a foot away from your body and come back into the rib cage, right? But all of the ribs, right, it's not solid stuck, right? In back where the ribs are attached to the spine, there's kind of like a little joint so that the ribs can move around, move back. They're flexible. Um, and where they attach to front, they also can move a little bit. Right? They can separate a little bit. They can twist, turn forward and backwards a little bit. And the object is, you're not going to try to, I'm going to move the ribs this way or that way. You're going to let them stay relaxed. But from the inside, as your lungs, as that sense of breath goes backwards, it's going to expand sidewards also. And that's going to cause a little bit of movement. And you're going to allow that movement to happen, but not allow it to happen where it's causing the chest to w move way forward, right? The chest, the sternum's going to stay sunk, but then that area, you're going to want to allow the breath to move in into that area. And if you're feeling someone's body, you're going to have to not just touch the skin, right? What if I right, take the hands on Lee's arm? It's not just touching the skin. You're going to have to dig in a little bit and feel Right? This arm's easier to see. That's not really where we're going to, I can't feel her size from here. But you have that sense of keeping the hands soft, but putting a little bit of pressure. And that pressure, then, you're going to feel the movement that's underneath. And maybe her hands will move a little bit. Maybe they'll open and separate a little bit. But you should feel something to push against. In addition to me feeling, right, the important thing, is that your partner, right, that Lee is feeling that there's some movement going sidewards, right? And so the object is to put your hands, right? We did this area in the lower body, right, where the midriff is, but we're going to put our hands a little bit higher up now and sp spread them a little bit so you get a larger area. And that's just on the skin, but if you feel Right, I put a little bit of pressure on. And then when she breathes, she's going to feel my hands and feel something to breathe towards. That's it. Very good. And she has good, pretty, pretty even motion, but a little bit. And this is something you'll want to look out for, the breathing everywhere in your body. A little bit, oh, it's going here, then it's going here, like the body's opening, chuk, 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 a little bit. Um, and this is something that you'll want to notice in your own body. Wherever that happens, if you feel the belly's opening, and then it opens, and then it opens, instead of that chuk, chuk, chuk movement, over time, you're going to really try to get that movement to be smoothly and evenly going out and smoothly and evenly coming back in. Right, so that's something you'll want to notice in your own body and you notice with the person that you're working with. But you're going to put the hands on, put a little bit of pressure, and with my mind, feel inside her body a little bit. That's good. And it's, it's just through practicing and focusing on it for a few minutes it's gotten a lot stronger and a more even. She has a little bit more movement on this side. This side's a little bit less. But they're generally, it's really pretty smooth and good. And while that's happening, you can check. Right? You can see her sternum here is not moving, but you can put your hands on there if, if they are and make sure that that, right, not breathe up into your chest. How, do it how you wouldn't want to do it, like fill your, right? You don't want that lifting up and the breath going in there. You want that staying relaxed, the breath going into the upper back and the sides. Great. 
Thank you. Very good. All right. So basically, you have this ring around the lower body. Piece by piece, we went through till you have that sense of the whole movement. And now we're moving up, up in the body and getting that breath into the upper body. But the difference is in the upper body, you're leaving your front relax and allowing the breath to go backwards. So thank you. And take a partner now here and put your hands on their side. Check the sternum, right? And you can also, while you're at it, get those lifting, help them get the liftings in their body. So when they're sitting and notice again, in this upper body, right? If the upper spine is collapsed, it will cause those ribs not to be able to move. And it will be very hard to get the breath to go into the sides here if the ribs are stuck. So you'll want to make sure that there, you have that lifting that we have did the legs, the quad, the midriff, lifting the head. That creates space in the spine. If the spine is closed down, the ribs get stuck and they have no movement. So. Anyway, give this a try, and if you don't have a partner, if you don't want to work with a partner, you could also sit and get those liftings. You can put your hands, it's a little harder with the palms, especially here, but you can find a way to put your hands on your ribs. Right. And again, notice then, is one side collapsed? I open that midriff, lift through the top. Notice what happens with your ribs if you tuck your chin and lift up through the, through the head up top and then start to get the breath going. Not just touching, even if you're doing it with your own hands, penetrate a little bit. So you start not just thinking about moving the ribs, but the movement's coming from underneath from towards the center of the body as the lungs expand, as that sense of movement wants to come from somewhere below. Right? So it's not the skin and it's not just moving the rib cage, but you're trying to get that movement from below to push sidewards, to expand sidewards. So I'll give this a try. If you're working with a partner, we'll do it for a few minutes. If you're not feeling much movement, try to maybe adjust the posture. Breathe, inhale, exhale. Once you get some sense of movement again, you're going to be looking for that smooth, even, continuous rhythm, just like we were doing in the belly, in the lower back, the upper back. The same thing goes in the area of ribs. You're getting that breath to start to happen. So put your hands on the ribs and, right, you may be doing it piece by piece, but some of you I notice, right, are way down low. You want that to go all the way up into where the armpit is. So just like we have did the upper back, it is the whole sides of the bad body under the arm down to that midriff area.
Now just take the next couple minutes, but we don't have a lot of time, so you should be f finishing up the next couple minutes if, and then switch partners so you both get a chance to play both roles. Again, if you're at home, keep breathing into the sides. If you have a sense of feeling it, maybe you can put your hands down and see if you can't still have to get that area activated. And even on both sides. Now if you're finished, you can keep working with someone if you want, but if you finish, just sit down and let's be quiet and let's just finish our practice this morning by all breathing together. So sit in your chair, adjust your posture, relax your body, and breathe. And we've been just been working on the sides of the body. Get the sides working. Inhale, exhale. And then try to do the sides in the back. You can start out just the top if you want, then you can do all of the sides, the whole of the back. Make sure your, your back's rounded a little bit. Make sure you're lifted. Highway points lifted. Your arms and legs are open. You're lifting in the claw. You're opening that space in the midriff a little bit. Breathe in the up. The back and the sides. And 
in the back and the sides and the belly. Breathe, get all the breathing we've done so far working together. So a lot of different places to keep your to f- keep your focus on at the same time. And the more relaxed you make your mind, the more just easy your mind becomes just comfortable just sitting there, the easier it is to start to feel more than one thing at once. If you have a trouble keeping track of everything, just do one piece, just the belly. Then add the sides. And once that gets going, then add the lower back. Then add the upper back. Then add the sides of the body under the ribs. Relax your eyes. You can close your eyes if you want. But whether they're open or closed, you're going to try to let the eyeballs, let the eyes soften. All right, well, thank you, everybody. When you finish, take a break. Try to maintain whatever calm that you've created. Notice, keep your awareness going. And we'll see you tomorrow. There's one more breathing practice in this session. And uh, anyway, thank you for joining me today.